in this module we shall give a complete description of every single compact subset of r without further ado let me state the theorem hi neighborel a subset k of r is compact if and only if it is closed and bounded and the proof is rather easy an unbounded set an unbounded set cannot be compact this we saw in the previous module as an example of non compact set if a set u subset of r is not closed in the last module one of the examples was that saying that any open set u would be non compact an open set cannot be non compact now i'm starting with if a set u subset of r is not closed then it must immediately be not compact right because a set that is not closed must be open no this is not true this is not true one of the common mistakes beginners make is to have this false dichotomy that a uh, set that is not open must be closed and a set that is not closed must be open the complement of a closed set is open and the complement of an open set is closed does not mean that any set that is not open is closed and vice versa a subset of r just like a door can be open closed or anywhere in between so please remember that so i cannot just say since set u is not closed it must be open we are done no if a set u is not closed then then there is a limit point limit point x in r of u such that x is not in u that's the only way by which the set u can fail to be closed it has some limit point which is not there in the set let xn in u be such that xn converges to x such a sequence must exist simply because x is a limit point of u but no subsequence or rather i will not want to have too many negatives but every subsequence every subsequence of xn must converge to x hence u is not compact the definition of compactness is that every sequence in that set has a subsequence that converges to a point in that set i have considered a point outside that set and found a sequence that converges to that point no subsequence therefore can sub uh, converge to a point inside that set so the definition of compactness is violate okay so we have proved one direction we have shown that if a set is compact then necessarily it has to be closed and bounded now let k subset of r be closed and bounded we have to show that it's compact and the proof is exactly word for word what we did for a closed interval let xn in k be any sequence by bolzano viestras bolzano viestras x and k converges to some x in r for some subsequence for some subsequence by closeness x is in k and we are done this is word for word the argument we gave for a closed interval 
so this short proof completely characterizes compact subsets of r they are precisely the closed and bounded sets of r now there can be many exotic compact sets we will explore one of them in a later module called the cantor set you must not be misled into believing that the only compact sets look somewhat similar to closed intervals or finitely many points they can be very complicated the cantor set is one exotic such object we, which we will discuss in some detail now the last part of the proof of the hyneborel theorem sort of suggests that even though compact sets could be very weird they do behave very much like closed intervals in a lot of senses okay this analogy that closed sets closed and bounded sets are similar to closed intervals can be illustrated in another theorem theorem nested intervals theorem for compact sets remember we had a ne nested intervals theorem for closed intervals uh, i was about to write compact interval that makes no sense compact sets okay the theorem is as follows let ki or kn n n n be a sequence of nested intervals nested intervals this just means that kn is a subset of kn minus 1 is a subset of kn minus 2 dot 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 is a subset of k1 the sets are all nested inside each other okay like a russian doll suppose oh no other assumption is needed uh be a sequence of nested uh, i wrote intervals again sorry about that be a sequence of nested compact non empty sets non empty sets i don't want any of these sets to be empty then then intersection kn is not the empty set is not the empty set okay in fact intersection kn would be ah i will uh, talk about that in later let me just finish off with this intersection kn is non empty proof what i do is the following let xn b in kn since each one of these sets is non empty by assumption by a hypothesis i can find an element xn in kn right let xn in kn note that note that xn such that n greater than or equal to some m is a subset of kn right why is this because these are nested intervals so in particular this entire xn is in k1 for all n okay so all the terms of this sequence beyond the mth term will be a subset of km now by compactness by compactness some subsequence some subsequence subsequence of xn converges to x in k1 right right now observe that observe that by deleting by deleting the first suitable number of terms number of terms in the subsequence the subsequence we get 
a subsequence in Km. Okay, here M is fixed. Okay, that subsequence will depend on M. In fact, in fact, if we delete the first m minus 1 terms of the subsequence, the subsequence we get a subsequence in km. So, at the most, the first m terms can be uh, m minus 1 terms can be outside of km. Okay, so this means this means this new subsequence new subsequence also converges to x. I have just deleted the first few terms of a subsequence. The resultant subsequence should also converge to x. Therefore, therefore x is in km again by compactness by compactness within a compact set if you have a sequence that converges that point at which it converges must be in k right so that means this means x is in intersection of km and we are done and we are done. So, this nested intervals property generalizes to a nested intersection theorem for compact sets. This is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the module on the Heine-Borel theorem.